So excited. You get to work with Dirk Durham, the bugler. Bugler brand. Here we go. Ghost King calls. Here, I'll hold your bow for you, sir. Here, I'll just hold No, it. no, I'll hold it for Let me please hold your bow. Thank you. Oh my god, this is amazing. It's amazing. Don't teabag it. Okay. Is this the bow you're hunting with this year? Are you? What are you hunting with? Um probably the carbon something. Okay. something. Whatever the hell they call it. Stealth 35? Oh yeah, Mach 1 probably. Yeah, whatever they get it. Okay. Hi, I'm Dirk, and this is my good friend. You Joel. know my name. <laughs> Everybody knows his name. Okay, let's go. And we're going to talk today about how not to shoot a bow. <laughs> we're going to change his life in just mere minutes. Here we go. Got an arrow? Yep. Okay, you're going to shoot this 20 yard Vegas target. I want you to shoot the top of the three. Top of the three, 20 yards. The top one? Yep, top one. Okay, so what direction did you come, did you bring your sight up or down? What did you do? When you aimed at mm -hmm. that, were you bringing your sight up from the bottom, down from the top? What I don't direction? Know. Don't, I don't, don't know. know. That's don't, good that you don't know. I don't remember. Okay, so what was your plan for that shot then? Like, what was my plan? Yeah, what was your plan? Like, how were you going to execute that shot? I just shot? wanted to have a nice clean break. Okay, let's do it again. Did you feel that that one was a clean break? Um, like, like felt, was was it a surprise when it went off or yeah, no? It felt pretty good. Okay, here we go. I felt like I kind of knew when it was going to go though. It wasn't okay. Like a surprise. Okay. Okay, give me one more. Got one more? Let's do one more. Yeah. Was that better than the rest of them or same? Same, I think. Okay. So what what issues have you had in the past in target panic or shooting or have had, you had I've any had, or what? I've had some target padding in the past. Like I've what? Kind of like inconsistencies and just like getting hitting, you know, all over the place. Okay. You know, not just like I, I feel like Anticipating the shot, like feel like like a bunch of people watching me. Okay. And feeling like I need to hurry up. Okay. Like, hurry up and like let it. Does that does that equate to difference in sight picture or difference in trigger work for you? Mm, sight picture, I'd say. 
Okay, so like, it, does the sight picture get hurried, or does the trigger get hurried? Mm, I don't know. Never really okay. thought of that. Okay. Alright, let's go again. Show us how slow you can go on the trigger on this one. Okay. So, have you ever, in your history of archery, have you ever been locked off a target with your pin? Explain that. Have you ever, like, not been able to put your pin on the target, or have you always been able to put your pin in the middle? Mm, yeah, Be before I, I, you... I struggle with that a lot. Okay, so have you ever fired before your pin was in the middle? Probably, yeah. Okay, so, so when you said you were locked off target, do you usually lock low on the target? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so therefore, do you bring your sight up from the bottom or do you not recognize yeah, that I, movement? Yeah, I think I, I bring it up. When you shoot an elk, do you bring your pins up from the bottom? Mm -hmm. Or is it different when you shoot elk? It's probably the same. Okay. Um, like if you were to shoot a bull that's just standing there at 30 yards, you've got a 30 yard pin, yeah? So do you, like walk me through that shot on a bull. Okay. Before, before so he gets there. So he, he's, he's already come in he's already and he's standing in. there and you weren't able to get the full draw yet, okay. right? But he's maybe looking the other way or his eyes are behind something so he's not going to see you draw. Right. So how, run me through that shot. Okay. So. Before he ever got there, mm -hmm. in my, inside my head, I'm, I'm talking to myself, saying, okay, do this right, don't get excited, breathe, breathe. Okay. Sometimes you, get, you kind oh, of forget yeah. to breathe, yeah, and absolutely. breathe, and then you're, <laughs> right, sure. you know, it even happens to me. Okay. So I call myself, tell myself, breathe, 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 uh -huh. do it right, mm -hmm. do it right. I watch for the, I watch for when his eye gets sure. covered or he mm -hmm. turns. And I try to draw up as slow as I can mm -hmm. without being in any noise or notice. Okay. And then I look for the right spot. And again, I tell myself, do it right, do it right. You know, find the, find the right spot instead of just like going for it. Okay. And try to find the spot, hover, hover, do it right, shoot. Okay. So all of those things, like would you say, do you say those exact same things every single time? Yeah. And then there's some more stuff too. Okay. Like What's more I, stuff? Before I ever... Before I might even draw my bow, as soon as I get some tension on the string, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, grip. I'm, I'm like focusing on my grip. Get a grip, you know, mm -hmm. have my grip right. Sure. Okay. Back, nose. I'm thinking nose, nose. Mm -hmm. um, level, level your bubble. Okay. Find the right pin, and then the other stuff. So, again, when, you, when I interview people that mm -hmm. kill lots of stuff, mm -hmm. that's how they do it every single time. They always say something to themselves during the shot, but there's specific moments, like when you told me what you were saying, that's the skill, right? Just making a decision to actually say those things, and when you are controlling your breathing, that's why you remembered to say those things. Like when you talk to new, new elk hunters, they're not doing any of that stuff, right? They're so worried about, you know, where they're gonna stop the bull, if they're gonna get the full draw, none of that stuff you talked about ever enters their mind. So that's the skill of it. But do you do the same thing? Did you do those same things? Did you say the same things in any of those four shots that you just shot? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So again, that's the skill on how you did it. Because if you were, I mean, were you locked off the target on any of those shots? No, you weren't, right? Because you were talking yourself through it. All I do is I take people, I give them those skills of being able to talk themselves through it, but I give them specific words to say at specific moments. Like you already have these, these specific moments where you're saying, you know, do it right or whatever. Those are decisions that are making you more present in the task, right? So that's the key. And when I interview, I mean, I've interviewed lots of people like yourself that are very successful hunters and it's the same across the board. They all say something to themselves during the shot. And it's usually, like when you were explaining what you say, you were talking about doing it right, and that's, that's a decision that you say even before the bull is stopped, right? So you've, you've made a decision to shoot this shot right before, and you've shot so many bulls that you've kind of inoculated yourself to that. But, you know, people, you're, you're saying these things, you're making the decisions, but then when it really comes to that moment of truth, and you're like, 
oh man, this is, this is going to happen. That's when you get that adrenaline rush and all that stuff. And that's when you got to talk louder, right? That's when you really got to take it away from autopilot because most people, they may have made that decision like, oh, I did that long time ago. It took me 13 years to kill a bull elk. And every time one was coming in, I was like, okay, Turner, this time, this time you got to do it right. I mean, literally those words, but he was still 70 yards away and screaming and coming. And then I would never make another decision. And that's where I would fall apart, right? So it's making those decisions. Oh man, this is happening. I'm going to do this right. At that moment, when you say that, it finally means more to you to stay in the process than to kill that bull. Because you know damn well that if you do stay in the process, you're going to smoke that thing. But if you don't stay in the process, who knows what's going to happen, right? right? That's, that's where you get the misses at 10 yards and what pin did I use? How far was it? Who knows? Did I look through a peep sight? I don't know. Don't remember anything about it. But in those shots, right, I know that you've had some target panic issues in the past, as we all have. But on those specific shots, you got all these cameras looking at you. You got me filming you, all that stuff. What that did for you is that upped your determination so that you made those decisions, right? So that's what we do here in Elk Shape Camp is I teach people, you got to find that determination. You found it through, you know, so many successes, but I'm sure you've had lots of failures as to, well. To right? this day. Yeah. To this day. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm perfect, mm -hmm. but to this day, like, you know, almost, almost every bull uh -huh. I've got my sight on, there's something inside me that says, jerk the trigger, <laughs> oh, shoot oh, him, man. shoot him. Huge, right? And I just have to say, no, Yeah. we're doing this right. Exactly. To, like, it's it. so I hear, similar. I hear my dad's voice a lot of times mm -hmm. because he, you know, growing up shooting rifles. Sure. He said, you know, don't jerk, jerk the trigger. Don't yeah. jerk, you're jerking the trigger. Yeah. Right. You're jerking the trigger. Right. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Whatever. So all that, you know, I get his head, his oh, voice yeah. in my head sometimes Absolutely. too, you know, don't jerk, jerk the trigger. Whatever that, my, my brain is screaming, shoot him. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm, wait, wait. And right. Release. So you're, I mean, you're, you're now to the point in your life and your hunting career that you are using elk for concentration practice, essentially, right? Like that bull I shot in 2019, I mean, he is 10 yards in front of me. He's ripping the ground up, throwing stuff all over the place. I finally get the full draw with my stick bow and I'm looking down the shaft of that arrow and everything in my being is like, just let it go. Just let it go. I mean, it's 10 yards. This thing, there's, yeah, not, yes. there's nothing between me and it. And it's just like, just let it go. And I'm like, no, I ain't going out like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I ain't doing that. And I'm like, here I go. And that's, that's my, mm -hmm. that gets me through that critical second. You may say, do it right, whatever. Yeah. It gets you through that critical second and makes you intensely present for the task at hand, which is to move that trigger slow enough you can stop it, right? So that's when I'm filming your finger, I'm looking, are you actually getting into it? And you are, right? We may refine a, a couple of things, but I mean, you shot an awesome group down there, but the main thing was, is that you made the decisions in your blueprint, right? So you have this, this blueprint that you've made over the years for your successful shot on a bull elk, right? And that's where, that's what we're giving people is that, that success immediately because we're teaching them what decisions to make, when specifically to make them, and then scientifically how to carry them out. So that was awesome shooting, bro. Thanks. Was good work. And, and, I'll, and I will say, I've listened to you a lot over uh -huh. the years, you know, you may not know it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've listened to you a lot, talk, you know, podcasts or YouTube sure. videos or whatever. And just listen to what you're saying and like kind of figuring that out for myself yeah. as I'm, you know, because we don't live, live anywhere close to right. each other. It's hard to get together. Sure. But like listen to that and like, okay, these are the things I really need to work on. It, and it's really helped me. Right. That's awesome. That, just to hear you say that, I mean, unsolicited, what are you thinking about? And you, t you walked me through the whole thing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> he's making decisions just like mm -hmm. most successful hunters do. I will awesome. notice too, like if I go shoot like 3D mm -hmm. like with a group of people, yeah. and I get to chat and I talk. Sure. And like, Dude, it's your turn to shoot. I said, oh, okay. Right. I hit horrible. Right. I mean, you. It's like every time you have to. Yeah. It, not, I mean, you know, once you learn it, doesn't mean you just do it every time. You, right. You have to work at it every, every time. time. So you're. I mean, you're. Con what you're doing is you're basically consciously overriding your right. central nervous system, and as soon as you don't start the shot with a decision you haven't even opened the door to the shot process. It's not even accessible to you. Right. That's when you get locked off target, you're like, ah, oh, whatever, right? And you shoot it and you're like, ah, oh, it was okay. But that is, that's where I was talking about, practicing your own failure. Because when you shoot those shots, and if you, if you, even if you hit it well, you're literally just practiced your own failure, right? Can, and all these new, new hunters are out there not making these decisions I mean, I've watched everybody come into this shop today that's been on the range and they are practicing their own failure. They're, they're punching that trigger, right? And they're just 
you're making yourself worse, right? Instead right. of m practicing, making the decisions. That's the key. That's the, that's the true skills of successful hunters. That's good work, man. Awesome. Thanks. Joel Turner can get in your head a little bit. Well, quite a bit. Um, I'm not used to that. Uh, someone messing with my shot at all. Um, I'm usually practicing where it's quiet. If there's anything in the background, like my dog's running around or whatever, very, you know, like I wait for the disturbance to kind of leave. He didn't give up. He just sat there messing with me, messing with me, trying to get me to focus on more of the shot than actually hitting the target. Focus on my squeeze, um, pulling through rather than, you know, trying to worry about if I'm gonna hit it or not. And I, I did, I shot a decent group, um, but it wasn't horrible, but it, it, it could definitely use work, but we weren't focusing on that. We were focusing on releasing that perfect arrow. And um, it took it took four, four shots to, to get me better. Um, definitely does not perfect, but I'm gonna work on that. And it's funny, I, I kind of know some of these things, like he, it, you're, it's kind of mind over matter, because that whole thing where like kind of talked about when I have a bull in front of me and something inside my head says, shoot him. I was, I was hearing that, shoot him, shoot, shoot it. But I have to shut that up, find a way, you know, to keep saying my like, do it right, do it right to quiet over the top of that, shoot him and, you know, focus on that shot. So um, yeah, I'm pumped. That was awesome. Joel. I've been, I've been really wanting to get with Joel for a long time and, and work on this, this shot stuff. Cause I don't think, I don't think, I don't care how good you are. I think everybody can do better. Um, if I'd have come in here and did it perfect, I think he still would have been able to find some flaws, some chinks in my armor on the deal. And uh, hey, I'm not too proud to uh, try to get better. I'm, I wanna get better every time. I wanna learn something every new every year in the elk woods. I wanna learn something new in the off season while I'm shooting my bow. So. Um, yeah, if you guys have a, a archery coach close by, definitely work with him. Um, if you can ever get with Joel Turner and have him go through this stuff with you, I think it will pay off big dividends um, in the end. So. Working with Dirk, you know, he gave us the entire plan of his shot on critters, but what I saw in his trigger was still just a slight open loop trigger punch, which means that he's not 100% committed to actually work in that system and I don't know if he ever shot a shot like that before where he actually concentrated so hard on it and really blocked everything out but I was able to get him to do it finally because I I had to mess with him enough to where his what we call the FU Turner factor or the watch this factor whatever his determination level finally got high enough to where he just went I don't care what you say I don't care what you do I'm doing it this way no matter what right and sometimes I have to get people just a little bit angry to get their determination level high enough so that they can do it. And once, I mean, I'm watching very specifically with what's going on with his finger, and that last time, it was like a different person because you saw the decision points and you saw the frustration, and then you saw the determination come in. And once that determination got high enough, then and only then did we start to see that movement and it's moving and moving, and then you see he's staying in it and he's totally committed to it, and then boom, that shot broke as a surprise, and now our job is to blueprint it, right? So, you know, we're gonna get Dirk to do that every single time, no matter what, and then he's gonna start using critters and using people and using everything to get his determination level higher and higher to where there's no wonder in his shot anymore. He's not gonna wonder if he's gonna control his shot. He'll go on all these elk hunts, and he'll know exactly how he's gonna control his shot every single time, no matter what.